Hello, can you guys hear me now? Excellent. <laughs> Sorry about that one, guys. That was basically my own fault because I actually did unplug my Go XLR a while back and then I plugged it back in of course into another usb port and of course that changes all the setting in settings in windows excellent going uh yeah uh I was i was thinking about taking on train sim world 3 uh because i've heard so much about it and uh so yeah i was thinking about doing some passenger trains uh germany basically uh <laughs> And probably some other countries as well. Uh, just have to say that I do not know a lot a lot about the PCB or LCB. I've been trying to figure kind of figure things out uh, by myself and with some help from Lars Gunnar. And I find the system like kind of awkward, but I do understand that it's quite ingenious in the way that. By using such a system, you don't really know need to know much about the line you're going to operate on, except that you just need to abide the signals. Um, and as long as you do that, everything should kind of like work out nicely. So uh, yeah, uh, I'll just I think I'll just start by hopping into a route and see you. How it goes. Uh, let's do a scenario. Uh, this is the old ICE. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's do some freight first, then we do some passenger. This one. This one I should know like really well because I actually drive these locals almost every day. Hey there, Gilbert. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, welcome to Würzburg. Today we will be operating the BR 185.2 to Fulda. Oh, did the sound, the hum in the background? Uh, they've done that really well. Bird.
just apply the independence. Release the main brakes. And let's get moving. See if this works. Right to release zero zero. Am I missing something? Oh, come on. is real slip for sure come on let's get going Is it moving? Is it moving? Nope. And why is that? Uh, brake pressure is not high. It's the main brake pipe here. Uh, it's five bars and you have the res reservoir here which is almost 10 and you have zero bars in cylinder and we are actually kind of moving now on. See wipers. Okay, finally moving. Uh, kind of like really hard to see except for in the HUD uh, just around the your speed uh, you kind of have like these red waves and um, and that indicates that your wheels are slipping uh, in reality we will definitely hear that on the engines and as well as like really feel it in the loco when when things are kind of slipping. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's right down here. These are the vipers. See? 
volatile you say that to turn on afb control r he's on Headlights the lights bright like really This is like really dark. Is the headlights on? Uh, let's see. Come on. Well. Absolutely on. Really weird. See you when I get back into daylight. To the seat because of the Zifa. See the switch. Oh, should be on. Light switch should be. Oh, here we are. Here we are. Tail lights and headlights. Come on. You. Here we are. Running now with the PCB and LCB, the train should kind of operate everything on its own. Uh, so uh, in Germany, they, <laughs> I mean, it's just one step away from driverless trains uh, with that kind of system. <laughs> it's kind of scary, but really, really relaxing. Uh, 
that uh, Scott, uh, the control layout in the cab is basically spot on when it comes to reality. Uh, we do have the AFB and everything on the locals here in Norway as well because uh, they're kind of German and <laughs> built by the same produ producer, Bombardier. Um, and yeah, uh, so even though it's not in function in Norway, uh, yeah, the layout is just the same, uh, but we don't have the, this display over here. Uh, I think it's called HBU or something. Uh, that one we do not have. Uh, but we have this display and this display and of course the cab radio. Overspeeding Deluxe. Okay, let's see if we can... Let's do... Okay. Let's see that. Hello there, Adam. Okay. Uh, weird thing they if be, then I'll just continue in manual. down and let's try this now zero all the way up and i see Thank you, Adam. Uh, yeah, it was uh, the last video I just posted was a real, real release of the previous one because for some strange reason, YouTube found out that they were just going to make it unavailable for everyone to play after three weeks. Um, had some round with uh, support and <laughs> And they said that, oh, there's something wrong with your browser. You have to clean out your cache and stuff like that. And I was like, dude, seriously, this happens in every type of browser and it happens to multiple people. And then they just ended up with like going silent. So I just deleted the old video, re-uploaded re it and it seems like it's working nice now. Thank you for the soup chat, Sandy.
Adam, uh, there isn't very much snow here yet, and it's still and it's still fall. So yeah, there will be videos this winter. Oh, let's see. Uh, hello, RCG. What do you like better about driving freight and what do you miss about driving passenger train? <laughs> oh, um, <clears throat> uh, driving freight is like, it is really different. Um, uh, nothing is kind of like set. Uh, your days are more dynamic uh, compared to passenger service because then your day is kind of set. Uh, you have your schedule you're just supposed to like in my example like going from bergen to voss and then back to bergen and then back to voss again um in in right it's kind of more you just go from a to b uh and that time is kind of set but you have the reading of the train and like stuff like that every day and that is something you don't have every day when you are running uh, when you're running passenger service uh, because uh, uh, because uh, you might be relieving another driver and that train has already been out in traffic so you wouldn't need to like are uh, doing all the safety checks and stuff like that uh, we also drive mostly during a late evening and night when we are running freight, which is quite different from passenger service, which is daytime. Uh, again, um, also things tend to happen more at night. So when, uh, when we are out operating, we see a lot more action that is happening during night which you don't see during daytime and yeah it's um uh, it's different it's uh you have to communicate a lot more with uh, the traffic control center and yeah it's basically it's more dynamic um you have to do a lot more compared to in passenger traffic Oh, to 85? Is it 85? bit too early oh i wish i had arms <laughs> and something else about passenger services in norway um in the in yeah, let's say during during the situation we are in now, not when it comes to the global thing about the privatization and and stuff like that, everything is kind of like unset. Uh, every everyone kind of needs to reinvent the wheel. Um, why they do stuff like that? Why they decided to split out a fully functional railroad system into into. Uh, ton of small monopolies um is just beyond me uh, we had like a really dynamic system where you could transfer resources to the places where they were needed 
Uh, but now, now everything seems so locked, rigid, and it's everything is just like food for lawyers. That was like really weird. And you see it also on since resources has been locked to each individual line, um, you have like uh, one company, if they have a busted locomotive, they lack a locomotive. They, they're just not able to kind of like transfer a loco from uh, another line to, uh, to uh, compensate for the loss of that loco. And yeah, that makes things like really tight on resources. And these companies are not able to like have a lot of resources because that costs money. And so, yeah, it's uh, it's just weird. The resource usage is like really, really locked tight and rigid. And it's kind of sad. It's like, it's, I don't know why they opted for a system like that. Okay, it just went there we are. Let's try this AFB again. Now we're standing still and you said control R uh, AFB off. Uh, AFB uh, is FB, on. Uh, uh, let's put this to max as someone said. Uh, see if this works kind of better. Is it? Is it? Yes, it is. We have a blue line. It's moving. Oh, wheel slip. Oh. oh. And another thing that is that Dovetail has got the sound on the engine's spot-ons. I guess this is kind of sampled. I wonder if Dovetail is going to do anything from Norway. <laughs> that would be kind of cool. See how they would manage to um, kind of like simulate that. So too, I think Norway would have been kind of interesting in this game, um, especially when it comes to the topography. And I guess that would be kind of a challenge for Dovetail to kind of like map out everything and get it like down to the detail. Uh, mountain Peace, yes, you can choose between Germany, England, and the US, and I think also there's a DLC for parts of Canada. Uh, Gordon, uh, you are asking what kind of food they are, they're serving on the train. Um, on freight trains? Nothing. On passenger trains, uh, it kind of depends on... <laughs> what company you're running with uh, but on the Bergen line they do have some 
food from local providers and trying to kind of have a menu that is um, down to what they kind of like the cultural part around the west coast uh, how the cafe is now compared to how it was before not sure since it's not NSB that is running the trains anymore Uh, Damien, uh, what kind of safety system is used in Norway? Um, in Germany, they use the PCB. Uh, in Norway, we use something called ATC. Uh, it's the same system that they are running in Sweden. Oh, Gordon, uh, yeah, I do think they have uh, have food that is that does not contain like uh, allergens. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, but believe me, that menu is kind of limited. have steam trains in uh in this game i'm not completely sure what i definitely know is that they do have things from the american continent europe and yeah probably asia in the future as well have to say that these headlights they are well uh not very realistic not very realistic even though the lights on uh the br185 is they are really lousy uh but in this game they are even worse so <laughs> uh yeah dovetail uh if you hear this and i you probably have fixed the lights. You guys just need to need to fix the lights. if i mean seriously if if this is if this is what you have uh of lighting and doing night in this game it will be like staring straight into like <laughs> the center of eye of sauron it's <laughs> it's nothing
Scoring 75? Yeah, I can I can believe that getting the lights right is hard uh, in video games, but even 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 though you don't have like long distance lighting, uh, I mean seriously, uh, this is like nah, it it's this is nothing. This is just like uh, a light in a circle around your window and nothing more. Uh, Siva 525, uh, it's kind of similar to the locos we operate here in Norway. Of course, there are some differences, but they're pretty much the same. Marcus Marcus Hagen, uh, what SJ Nord means? Uh, it basically means uh, the train company is called SJ. It's a Swedish Swedish train company. Used to be, be the Swedish Swedish state rail company, and SJ Nord is basically yeah their marketing scheme and name of the Essier branch that is running Northern Norway. Sandy D, uh, yes, I went, I changed out the camera system uh, from uh, Black Magic to a Sony. So uh, yeah, um, it is much better in low light conditions compared to the Black Magic. Joel, uh, thank you. Uh, seriously? Well, I think we're gonna stop again. down to a complete halt with this EFB. No clue what that was. Thank you, Sandy. Much appreciated. No power, of course. Come on, come on. It's moving, it's moving. Slowly, wheel slip.
does i noticed that sand does not work really well in uh in this game um you can really hear when you are sanding uh you can actually really hear the difference on the engines and the rumbling between uh, the rumbling that the sanding makes when you are driving on sand uh so yeah <laughs> this was kind of like meh Will it stop? Will it stop? Yes, it does. Nice. Okay, five more meters. See it are. have to stop like smack on the mark to get this going oh sandy so your cat is not scared of my videos anymore uh is it because of the horn or is it because <laughs> why isn't it afraid anymore Get moving. We are. Dread. Get this up. Ah, got used to the motion. Ah, that's interesting. Uh, the Finster Tunnel is not very old, actually, uh, and it has emergency rooms, yes. volatile uh, i guess i'm gonna get some penalties and everything when we are getting below 100 kilometers per hour when i have to acknowledge that i have seen the signals and stuff like that bon appetit norwegian mechanic
a sand improve? Let's see. Does it work? Does it work? Nah. Uh, in reality, we would have the option to see all the engines in four bars on the on the display here, uh, and then we could like be uh, monitoring how and which engines that would have kind of wheel slip the track, and then you could adjust both throttle and sanding and everything to get maximum traction out of the locomotive the game is the game is simulating uh i would say the operation of the loco uh even though we don't use uh afb in norway uh, i would say that the feel of this locomotive the the Bombardier tracks 140 AC2 and this designated 185.2 it's uh, it's uh, it's it's realistic it is realistic uh, the things are in the same place as the real one uh, even though a lot of the functionality here isn't just like <laughs> in place but yeah Uh, right now we're driving a scenario called leapfrogging uh, it is a freight train uh, actually cars Kind of nice. That's actually kind of cool. Let's see, have you? Yes, yes, yes. Very good. Marcus, uh, the class 73 uh, was not used between Voss and Bergen. It was used between Bergen and Oslo uh, as a regional train. Um, the class 73 hasn't been running on the Bergen line since I think it was 2011 or 2012. Um, yeah, and now it won't be running here anymore since it's not kind of a part of the package or uh, um yeah for for the franchise since everything has been privatized Joel Green, uh, <laughs> you can say that um, every every driver or engineer has that after a week of hell during winter uh, when all services are disrupted and the mountain passage is closed and you're basically spending hours after hours after hours waiting for the line to clear and them to open and you kind of get the counter message like every hour um i think the longest i've been stuck somewhere is 
It was one time I came into Bergen. I think it was almost nine hours delayed. That was uh, that was kind of a heavy shift. I, after that shift, I didn't want to like see another train for the rest of my life. But yeah, the day after, back out. <laughs> Harris uh, type is yes, um, that is correct. Uh, on the Bergen line between uh, between Oslo and Bergen uh, for the regional service, it's only locomotive plus carriages, and it's been like that since 2012. You don't need to be <laughs> you don't need to be sorry for the nine hour delay. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, it's weather, and sometimes the weather on the mountain pass can be really harsh. It is a very weather exposed area, and there's two kind of like two weather systems meeting on top of the mountain plateau. So the weather during winter is basically completely crazy up there. Greetings, greetings. had a complete breakdown not on after i switched the freight mostly with modern locomotives you can just uh just like reset them just get everything down and just start from scratch and go back up uh but yes uh i did have a complete breakdown uh when i was running passenger trains um it was kind of interesting because uh, I hit like a huge slab of ice at Mjölfjell and it basically tore loose the brake valve uh, under the train and like damaged some other things and yeah. Uh, <laughs> so there I was at Myrdal and had to wait for help. The L18 mountain piece is still one of my favorite locomotives, but I have to admit that I really, really like uh, Stadler's uh, uh, Your Duel. Um, Your Duel is actually quite good, and it's. Oh, uh, yeah, I like it. I really like operating it. Ooh. Here we see a restricted signal, get down to, I would say, 45 and 50. Next one is showing stop, so I guess I have to acknowledge this one. And get the speed down ASAP. 1.2 kilometers. One, let's get down to... Okay, let's go down to 40. Hey, hey, Buckle91. Thank you. So, what lines in Sweden are you running on? Uh, Alfred, no, sadly, this is not a Norwegian route. Uh, it is in Germany, and it, it is snowy. Basically, what we have here. Thank you, Gessingus. Uh, 
And Naomi, the class 76 is not a Euro Duel. And the Euro Duel is a locomotive. The class 76 is basically a flirt with a diesel module. Thank you, James Hall. Buckle 91, that is freaking awesome. I really like the X2. A volatile signal drop in front has happened several times. Uh, there was a, a period um, up on the mountain pass where the signal would just like, if you if you pulled too much power, it was it would just drop into your face, and that was kind of like that was not cool. Coming there with a train that was like half a mile long and heavy <laughs> as heck, and then you just minding your own business, watching the signals, and suddenly it goes from, like, clear to stop. And right in front of you, that is... Yeah, it's, um, it's not a very good feeling. It's, um... Kind of like your heart, like, jumps a beat or two. <laughs> Like, seriously? Buckle 9 to 1? Well, yeah, it's uh, basically like anything we run here in the Nordics, I guess. <laughs> Uh, the weather in my area right now is like rain, 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 and even more rain. Um, so it has been like really nice for the past couple of days, but now it's like back to the usual, which is rain. Oh no, what have I done? How oh, do I solve this? Oh no! Help! How do I get out of this zoomed view? Control guide. Does anyone have an idea on how to get out of this Zoom view? Thank you so much for the super sticker, Melis. Left, right, back. Aha! Let's... Ah! Okay. Feel the air. There we are. Thank you! Let's see. Is it green? Oh, it's dark. Like, what? You said... Come on. Up, up, up. Get it going. Some more.
I imagine that having having this like oh no sitting in the loco at work calling <laughs> calling uh the transport leader like uh could you please get me out of this zoomed view uh my neck is stuck Uh, and pace um the physical the physical feel of this game um it's kind of numb uh since operating a train uh is more than just like pulling on the sticks and pushing things forward or pulling it backwards it's it's you use every sensation you have you use your eyes you use your ears and how the how the feeling in the seat is so if you are slipping you definitely feel that and here in this game when you have a wheel slip you don't feel anything but you get this these red waves around uh your um your uh, uh current speed so yeah uh it's kind of hard to simulate that um uh, but we also hear it on the engines when you do have wheel slip uh they would kind of be pulling irregular uh, so that is something maybe dovetail would put a bit more effort into uh making it more easy to understand that you actually do have a wheel slip uh besides just that um visual reference down in the bottom right here around the current speed because if you want this to be even more realistic you would just turn off the hud and you would actually have to monitor everything by yourself which is of course much easier when you are in fact sitting in the cab but since this is a game you don't have that you kind of have to look around with the mouse um maybe it would be better if you if it was possible to make this game work with a vr helmet for example yes sandy <laughs> uh, you see uh, i don't get enough trains when i'm at work so i play train simulators in my spare time as well <laughs> Rick, this one is for you. Look, I'm wiggling my neck. Woo! Oh, Black Wolf, having a dispatcher mode in TSW3 would be so awesome. I mean, uh, there is a game on Steam uh, which where you actually play as a dispatcher. Uh, that if they could combine those two, it would be amazing. Imagine the scenarios, and having multiplayer as well, being able to like run a legit network. Let's see, what do we have? 120. Oh, Naomi, Transport Fever 2. No, we have not completed Transport Fever 2. I really need to get into that again as well. Uh, Voltile, yeah. Uh, Rail Route, that was the name of the game. I've been fiddling with Rail Route. Um, and it's and it's really good it's really cool i really like that game simrail uh is that coming out on steam anytime soon Ailed trains 22 i'm doing great thank you how are you
Name Tribal Typhoon. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, uh, I must say that running, using all the options on uh, the tracks, uh, running on a different safety system and everything, it's, um, yeah, you kind of get put into a um, new learning experience. And since this is a simulator, it's, uh, or game, I would say, uh, it's kind of hard to, like, get a grasp on how everything works as uh, some of the placements are kind of different but that is due to what country this locomotive was built for uh, but mainly the cap the dash and everything is pretty much similar to how it is everywhere else volatile uh, the most funny thing i've ever seen while driving a train um uh, yeah, uh, that was, uh, <laughs> I was running the local service between Oslo and Xi. Um, this is like 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago. And you kind of between, uh, uh, between three stations there, uh, from Kolbotten to, uh, to, uh, Oppegård, you kind of run alongside from Mirol to Oppegård, you kind of run along the road and i was looking out the side and i saw someone getting a bj in the car so i guess that is the most funny thing i've seen while driving a train um other things that i found strange the first time i saw a llama that was kind of strange uh not an uh, animal native to norway so yeah Uh, Naomi, yes, I have entered my 15th year as a train driver. Uh, it's kind of insane. 15 freaking years. <laughs> Volatile, yeah, adult content. <laughs> Passengers, please be advised. Yeah. They do have a lot of uh, llama farm just uh, after Ghoul. Thank you, Frostbite. Norwegian mechanic, BJ, what is that? Well, I would say that is exactly the same as mowing the lawn. You should know all about that. one yeah i have a lot of swedish uh, swedish uh, colleagues basically because i work for your freight company called green cargo so yeah uh we have a lot of swedes coming over operating in norway and now we will probably be going to sweden to operate as well so yeah uh it's fun Philip Trains 22, do you have a favorite type of train operating in Germany? I would have to say the ICE 3. That train is really nice. Uh, Mountain Peace, uh, I remember I the first train sim I ever played was Microsoft Train Simulation. Um, that one. <laughs> uh, that game was very rudimentary, uh, but it was really good for that time. And then I started operating trains myself in the real world. Um, then I tried Train Sim World 2 and the other one, Train Simulator or something. Uh, and yeah, 
I would say that Time Sim World is the ones that is most fun to play. Um, Volatile, yes, the BR403. 403. Uh, but yeah, uh, this game is quite good. It's, it, it's, it's fun. music Norwegian yeah that would be kind of cool um I kind of was hoping that dovetail would uh, would make sceneries or uh, like maps from other countries than like Britain the US and Germany uh, I would like really like if they made something from Sweden Norway Finland for that sake uh, that that would be really cool but I guess they would have a challenge getting licenses and stuff like that to make those maps. I'm not sure. Uh, Joel Green, so what's the, <laughs> the train version of Mile High Club? You know, I have no idea. I really don't know. Uh, I, I, I mean, doing something like that on the on the train is like... It's dirty, man. It's dirty. <laughs> and then it's not okay. Yeah, nah, I don't think it would be a foot high club. It would be more like a foot in a kebab. Okay, 11 kilometers left. Running LCB with PCBs, like really, when you are out on the main line, is this kind of like, it's kind of chill. Uh, Adam, yes, they are. Uh, they are going to, um, have the line between Voss and Bergen is going to be closed totally like blocked uh, a weekend or a, for a whole week in December or November and after that I think there will be like three weeks where only freight trains will be running to Bergen and all the passenger service will be suspended between Vos, Vos and uh, Bergen uh, so because they are going to do some major track works obviously and do some changes in the station uh, putting some new switches in and making things ready to reopen the old tunnel. Uh, the old tunnel, the old Ulriken tunnel will be open sometime. I think it's the end of 23 or the beginning of 24. Not completely sure, but that is when the new freight terminal and everything should be ready. And yeah, it's going to make life a lot more easy when arriving there again. Uh, Volatile, what kind of games do I like to play be beside train sims? Um, beside train sims? I would say I really like Transport Fever 2. I really love Transport Fever 1 as well, the first one. Um, and, um, oh, 100. And, yeah, uh, besides train related games, I like to play City Skylines. And 
yeah there's like a builder thing going on here and i really for realism and for like exploration and and that part i really really like kerbal space program uh kerbal space program then with of course realism overhaul and realist the uh, realistic solar system as and of course i do have to have a uh, print Sipia installed as well to have it even more realistic and challenging and yeah so that is a game I really like and so and for other content creators on YouTube um, Calvin McClure and Carnassa and N9 Gaming they make and the bearded penguin they make such good content uh, like video content for uh, for uh, Kerbal Space Program, so I would really, ha if you like space gaming and you're playing Kerbal Space Program yourself, I'd highly recommend those content creators because those videos they are prime. Saturman, yes. Uh, I was kind of, I, w I was really like stoked when Townsend asked, uh, his, uh, when his people asked if they could use some of my videos in his upcoming single. It was like, whoa, yes, of course, here, here, take my video. <laughs> Spot Center Nana, thank you so much for the super chat. Oops. Uh, if I am skydiving still, yes, I am. Uh, the thing is that this year I did half the amount of jumps as I have done previous years, uh, and it's it's been a lot of like all work and no play. Kind of situation so i really need to change that up for the next season so yeah um i need to i need to jump more a lot more i want to like really really get back into it like really doing a solid amount of jumps each year staying on the ground is like getting getting ground sickness Thank you, thank you so much for the soup chat, Black Wolf. And welcome as a member for the second month, Shane. Volatile, uh, jumping out of a perfectly functioning aircraft is, uh, I would say, it's refreshing. Um, I. To people who don't understand why people would jump out of a fully functional plane, it, you can flip that around because those people would kind of never understand the feeling of doing it. Uh, so yeah, it's it's um it's great. Okay, let's break. Get down to what? Stop. Uh, 
Uh, Caleb Trains 22. Did you ever wish to drive one of Cargonet Stadler Euro 4000s or one Green Cargo Stadler Euro 6000s? Uh, I am operating the Euro Duel, which I would guess is the 6000 uh, almost every day. Oh, this is the worst trying to like precision stop when you basically don't have a kind of a feeling on how much uh, the train is uh, slowing down Let's see let's get this moving a couple of more meters Uh, Roman Chopa, uh, so you say that 80% of the train traffic in the Ukraine was mainly freight? Come on, move forward. A bit more, please. You'll slip. Nope. Here you are. Is it really that sensitive? On three, two, one. Oh wow, it is. Good work. That was all for today. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh let's see. Uh okay. Is this kind of like Okay, and that was kind of like boom boom. <laughs> uh, that graph right there, like almost, yeah, over 115. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're fired. We'll be fired. Uh, thank you so much for becoming a member, Black Wolf. Uh, okay, so. Let's see. Where to now, guys? Where to now? Lynchfield Railroad. Uh, do I have Lynchfield Rail? No, I don't think so. Roma Shopa, that, that is interesting. Uh, let's try the ice. Leapfrogging, the castle run. Uh, that next day delivery, delivery of 403. Uh, Caleb trains 22. I have, uh, I'm certified on the RE or. Swedish equivalent of the BR-185 
and I have on 187 uh, and the Euro Duel, the T44, and on the RC. That is the ones I have. A timetable. Shall we pick a timetable instead? Uh, do you want to do that? Yes. How long is the timetable? Let's see. Trains. Timetable. Ooh, 406. Special. Okay. So, how long is this? Are these like three hours long? Or is that the time like 32 minutes? Delta Tango? Yeah, I do. Oh, 30 minutes long. Uh, let's see. Ice eliminator. Da, da, da. See if we can find one. Let's do this one. So, dynamic weather, yes. October 23, clear. Uh, it started. Oh, thank you, old tile. Let's see. 406, uh, get started. Okay. Uh, out of the seat. Hello, passengers. I like my privacy. Is everything on here? Wrong side. Isolated, you're not supposed to be isolated. You are not supposed to be isolated, and you are either not supposed to be isolated. See, forward. It's kind of interesting that all the buttons on all the trains on European trains are kind of from the same, located in the same place. Unlock doors. Uh, there. Oh, Delta Tango. Tango, thank you. Uh, Mountain Beast, I have no clue. I have actually no clue what it said. Uh, U UIC is also standard. Uh, it has been a standard for quite some time on uh, on trains now. Uh, yeah, so that and the CAN bus. And we going AF. Let us lock the door. The parking brake off. Yeah, yes. Hmm. 
please. Do I have to release something? Still in the red. Apply, release. It is pressed. Hello there, Agent KD. Thank you so, so much for Super Chat. Forward is set. Doors are closed. Should be able to move. Not able to move. Make sure the punter was up, and yes, I would believe that it should have been up. Raise circuit breaker closed. See here. Oh, of course. So, in these timetables, they basically go from. I would be really surprised if I came to a train set that was actually standing in the station uh, being like rigged down. That would be kind of like, what? Safe to release? Uh, is that that one? Let's rig RD. No, this is not live. This is like... Mm. This is just your conscience talking. Uh, Scott, for someone who does... Who wants to get into the business, but... Doesn't know where to start. The best place to start is to contact the company uh, you want to work for. Uh, it's it's kind of different from country to country, uh, but here in Norway, you would have to apply to for the Railroad Academy, and then you would have to undergo one year of training there. Uh, then after that, you can apply for a job in the train company you want to work for, and then you have to complete your training in that company. Uh, the education model in Europe is kind of similar from country to country. Uh, they are trying to standardize the whole thing. Uh, in the US, I guess that the companies themselves are running most of the education because uh, you have these huge freight companies that owns like 90% of the network over there. Uh, so I guess that would be the way to go. Uh, the best thing is to take contact the company you want to work for, uh, contact their uh, their HR department and talk with them, and they can point you in the right direction. Uh, 
I will tell, uh, I would love to drive the GTI Volkswagen, but the insurance on that is like really high and I am afraid that the amount of power on that small car would end up with me in jail or something. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm actually abiding the speed limits. I haven't had a ticket yet. Hey there, Railham. What are you doing, CJ? One forty. Oh, this is smooth. This is like really smooth. Mountain piece. I'm not gonna get a ticket. I'm not gonna have a ticket. We knock wood. Oh, lights. Normal. Oh, high beam. Nicholas, what are the green icons on the right that keep getting closer to with more popping up? Uh, that is the next signal aspect. So uh, it basically shows you what the next main signal is showing. So now we just pass a uh, kind of a distant signal and now you will see the other signal popping up. Ooh, we need to get down to 120 and that we need to do fast. I'm glad you're here, Lacewag. See platform. On ten. Atomic Force Gaming, not anymore. RNF. Thank you, Nixinity. Thank you so much for the super chat, Boomberry. force gaming do you get fined for over speeding in real life no you don't get fined but everything is uh, recorded on a black box so if you are speeding and it's excessive it's uh find is like equals like yes correctly fired you're fired
I mean, this, this is kind of a great train. If I would go back to passenger services again, it would definitely be on the ice. This is like really nice. <laughs> this is almost like coming from a lorry and going into like uh, a Bentley. Atomic Force Gaming? Yes, don't speed. That is the best thing to do because if you do speed and the worst case, the infrastructure infrastructure does has limits. So you have limit, then you have structural limit, then you have a bit more, then you break it. And when you break it, that carnage, uh, it's not good. We've seen pictures of that and you don't want that. Oh, I can increase speed. We had a, we had an accident here in Norway uh, when it came to like speeding, but ended up with derailing. And if I'm not mistaken, it happened in 2011 during the test of uh, of the new Stadle Flirt, and there were a lot of engineers and stuff like that in the driver's cab. So that was the reason. Uh, so driver got interrupted and. He didn't see the reduction sign and he went into a curb that was limited to 70 kilometers per hour and hit that curb in like, in like 120 kilometers per hour. And the train toppled and derailed and yeah, it was really bad. Really, really bad. So you don't want that derailment, distracting and like, yeah, that is bad. And that is one of the reasons. <laughs> Like, sitting here, playing the simulator, where I have to um, do the vigilance system and reading you guys on the chat whilst trying to follow the line and read signals on a line that I don't know. It's, uh, it's, uh, this is challenging. This is like multitasking on a new level. So something like this, doing something like this in real life, if someone like streamed real life what was going on and answering texts and stuff like that oh you would be fired so hard Caleb trains 22 was that the derailment when that train kind of went over off the bridge and down on the highway The graphics are really nice in this game. That thumbs up the dovetails for that because this is like really nice. And it runs really smooth as well. point it would be like the time where i would call the conductor and ask to have if they would be so kind to bring me a coffee
I kill a train 22. Ah, I see, I see. I was in upstate Washington. Saying just the fun part is coming up is uh, what, what 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 do you mean? Do you mean LCD or do you uh, referring to something else? I don't want anything to happen. As some person, no, I have not tried a maglev. I would really like to, but that would mean that I would have to go to. I think it's China, and I know they have kind of this uh, test thing. Ooh, look at this. Distance to the next signal. Or the next speed change, I guess. Thank you so much for the super chat, Rick. Oh, they have maglev in japan as well awesome of course it's going from the uh, is that the one that goes from some airport or something now we can increase to 200 put this to 250 and if i'm not mistaken the LZB should now be like in total control of the train with speed and everything and abide the restricted signals. Uh, Caleb Trains 22, yeah, I, I know that the TGV is a lot faster. I think it's like uh, is it between Lyon and Marcel or something that they are running at 350? Oh, wow, I really like these graphics. They're really nice. Ah, so, okay. Understand, understand, Piatron. Thank you so, so much for the super chat, all. Oh, this is cool. Ow. Oh, glitches. What are these? Hmm. Servant of Milan, moo. Storm Raven, 
totally accepted. Congrats on a new job. Caleb Chains 22. Yeah, uh, the Silex Silla uh, Aquila or however it is pronounced. <laughs> uh, those are really nice. And I think they're like doing 250 or 60 or something on parts of the line or even faster. But aren't you guys in the process of building a high speed line in California? This thing is not sure if you are aware uh, when the yellow end marker lights up near Köln, use PCB. Use PCB free and reset FB and throttle after getting out. Getting out like out of the train. So I am going to switch around and go back as well. Is that the point? A seal? Huh. Oh, wow. This is... <laughs> no Swangsbremsung today. So when I come to the transition uh, area from LCB to PZB, I need to like uh, reset. Okay, so I need to pull the throttle back down and then override or acknowledge. Thirty minutes to Among Us. Okay, so what I understand is that this game is actually so immersive because this was like really different. This, this was really really nice. I had to operate the ice. So. There will definitely be more than just this stream on this game because this was kind of cool. So I need to check out Britain. Uh, I need also to check out the US to see how that is. Oh, 120. Does it reduce the speed itself? Yes, it does. Servant or Milan? Uh, I mean, in every other country, maybe except China, uh, the government would pay or buy out the property owner and they would actually pay them market price on the property to be able to build like roads or high speed trains, train lines, and stuff like that. Uh, don't they do that in the US? Or are people like, no, no, we, we don't want progress. We want this to be as before. We want this to be the wild, wild west. Uh, Servant of Milan. No, they don't include anything from Norway. Uh, I'm not sure if they are going to or if they were intended to, but I guess that it has something to do with with uh, with licensing uh, and being allowed to kind of map everything uh, and especially here during these times we are in now um, where <laughs> this I would say is a less pleasant person on the other side of the border has kind of 
tilted everything in the world over to their more insecure place and unsafe. Uh, Naomi, yes, I have. And those trains are the KISS, the double deckers from Stadler. Imminent domain. Uh, that is when they, the government just go in and say like, yeah, we're going to build here. You have nothing to say. We're going to buy you out. So goodbye. But if you give people... Oh, I think I need to acknowledge this one. I would guess that if, if you actually paid people what their land was worth, like market-wise, or something above that, then they would have an incentive to actually sell that property if they don't use it anyway or if there's no like if it's not farmland and stuff like that Wow. Fully automated. And soft. It's like insert deity, take the wheel. I don't feel safe. Stop. Stop. Please stop. Stop. What? I guess we kind of have like a local train or something in front of us. We are on our way into Köln. Singers, aha, I see, I see. Uh, Caleb Trains 22. Uh, uh, also, Amtrak purchased new high speed train sets and will be entering service supposedly this year. Uh, who's the producer of those trains? Uh, 
Naomi, I guess they're gonna love you. Uh, and Naomi, seriously, they ha you have to serve and uh okay uh it's a bit release uh this and this down uh, not that maybe all stomp okay seventy meters per hour Let's see Yes, that was the sound of the LCB uh, coming to an end or something. 60. <clears throat> Green Bay, the Green Bay Packers. they're playing right now so what is the result who are they playing against uh -oh. get down in speed down in speed 40 kilometers per hour please 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 Restricted. Let's see, do I have to acknowledge that? Yes. Samia uh, Shock, it's kind of hard. Uh, which countries train I like the most? Uh, they all have kind of their own works i really like the high speed trains you have in europe uh i like the brute awesomeness of the trains in the united states because like everything <laughs> because everything there is kind of bigger uh unlock the doors and when it comes to like scenery, I would say Norway and Switzerland and kind of the countries that has mountains uh, because there's contrasts are bigger, uh, the scenery is more beautiful and you see more. You basically see more landscape uh, compared to like something that is completely flat. That? 
Stay below 45, okay. That but, but. PCB is still a mystery. Old metal. Uh, that wasn't hard. Thank you, James. Okay, so I'll guess I am going to end the stream there. Um, I'm definitely going to stream this game again uh, because this was kind of cool. Uh, the take this far is that great one thing in this game uh driving on another system uh the german system is it's challenging it's fun uh, i would say that the simulation as far as it uh what can i say it's you still don't kind of have the right feel when it comes to when the stop points how much speed or how much the train is breaking because that is something you we use our sensation in the body um the the feel of speed uh to determine uh but yes i would say that dovetail has some really really good points it's it's actually not that bad and i'm definitely going to be playing this again so stay tuned i will hopefully be able to stream this again really soon so with that i wish you a great Sunday, and I'll see you again soon. Okay, thank you. Bye.